Hello, welcome back to Beaver Up View. My name is Andy Shaw. This is lesson seven. Uh, I just want to finish off the different scales. Uh, there's a couple of scales we haven't done yet. One is chromatic scale, so I'll just draw that out. The only thing to remember about a chromatic scale, I'm sure you all know what a chromatic scale is, it's just every note basically between an octave. You would call a uh, chromatic scale. So if we're starting off at D, it would be D. D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, uh, C sharp, D. So it'd be that. The only thing you got to know about it, uh, a dim, uh, the only thing you have to know about a chromatic scale is that when you're going up, it's sharps, right, to say it's going up. But when you're coming down, right, just write it as flat. So if you're coming down from D, it would be D, D flat, C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D. Okay? The thing about a chromatic scale is that it goes up in half steps. So the number, if you're saying one half step, it'd be one, 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 one up time. So if you look at a piece of music and you keep saying one, 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 that is one half tone, one half tone, one, you know you're moving in, chrom in a chromatic scale. And there is a, a very important bebop line that uses chromatics that uh, uses a chromatic scale so which we'll look at in uh, in later on in this series so the next thing i want to talk about is whole tone scale you'll see whole tone scales now and again not really that you won't see them that often but uh, this is what a whole tone scale looks like basically I start from D. Got D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp, D. So that's what a whole tone scale looks like. And if you look at this distance between each note, it's two half steps, 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 two half steps. And if you look, there's only six different notes. One, two, three, four, five, six different notes. Seven if you take it back up to octave. Okay. So that's the main thing you've got to remember about whole tone. If you're seeing lots of twos like that, see it as a whole tone scale. Don't see it as, some people say, see it as, oh, that's a tetrachord and that's a, a Lydian tetrachord. That's what I've seen some people say on YouTube. But the thing is, a tetrachord is always a perfect fourth and that is an augmented fourth. So you don't want that. If you see, if you see lines and you want to identify four notes, just see it as a, a rising whole tone scale okay if it's in two you know whole tones like that two 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 not as a Lydia tetrachord because it's confusing that when you said Lydia tetrachord some people on YouTube have been telling you that's what it is and it, it ain't not not by my reckoning anyway okay so that's the whole tone scale okay so now we'll look at the pentatonic major scale right this is made up of a uh, tonic Uh, supertonic median dominant submedian and then back to tonic if you notice, it's only five notes, for, you know, if you exclude the octave. 
So you've got C, D, E, G, and A. So one, three, one, two, three, five, and six. Right, if you're looking at it as scale degrees of C major. One, two, three, five, six. Uh, and if you look at the notes that are missing, we've got, let me just get another colour. We've got this, this subdominant here, this F, if, if, if we're in C major, which is a tendency tone. That's wanting to pull to that. So you've got a tendency tone there missing, and you've got this B also here, which is also a tendency tone, the leading note, which wants to go there. So a, a pentatonic scale doesn't have these two driving notes. You know what I mean? You can use these to drive to the tonic and drive to this median. A uh, pentatonic scale doesn't have those, so it's it's less interesting. Even though a lot of jazz musicians today are all playing it and stuff like that, you know, you don't see it that often in bebop. But I'll just show it you anyway. So uh, we'll look at the other other pentatonic scale now, which is the pentatonic minor scale. Okay, so we're looking at the minor pentatonic now. Uh, and in if we look at it from C, basically in the key of E flat, so we've got C, which is the tonic. Then we've got no super tonic. We go straight to the median, which is E flat here, look. Median. And then we go to the subdominant, which is that F. And then the dominant. And then we've got the subtonic, because it's a B flat. And then we go to the tonic. Okay. So that's a so that's a five note scale again, if you're looking at it. If you're looking at it, it's from a major scale, it's one, flat three, four. Five flat seven. Okay. If you play the black keys on the piano, that's what you'd get a pentatonic scale as well, a pentatonic uh, minor scale. Okay. Uh, and the tones that you don't see are the supertonic, obviously, here. So the notes that are missing are this active tone here, which is the D, right? And this. A flat, this is compared to a minor scale, natural minor scale, uh, is this A flat as well. So if I added those, that would now be a natural minor scale. So this is a tendency tone, and that's an active tone, isn't it? So that's what's missing again. So again, like the pentatonic major scale, a pentatonic minor scale is not going to have the drive, because it hasn't got any active tone so it's not gonna have that drive towards tones that that uh, a natural minor does you know okay so I hope you get that so I just think if there's anything else <laughs> okay so I just want to go over some good practice in music writing uh, so first thing is when you when you're writing music at make sure that you write the clef and, and the key signature. A treble clef. I mean, it's pretty easy to draw, isn't it? And the key signature. I really get fed up of seeing people put stuff on YouTube or in books. I mean, even every, every, just about every American book does it. They don't put correct key signature in. So if, you, if you're writing in sharp keys, the thing to do is, let me see if I can show you. You want to, so we're starting off on F sharp here. The lines are like parallel, and then you square up there, so you're right on the line. You see me? You're showing you, you're showing what line it is, and I'm exaggerating this quite big to show you. When you do a line, It should be parallel, not quite on parallel. It's like that, see? 
And we've got G next, don't we? Will be parallel. Okay, and then D. You're actually showing the line. I'm not, I'm not doing this brilliantly because I'm, I'm not used to doing it on this big stuff. But th this is the order in which they go. If you, uh, if you actually look, if you went round the cycle of fifths, we've got F, and then the next one is the cycle of fifth C. So the next sharp is C, round the cycle of fifth. And then the next one is G. Can you see we're going round the cycle of fifths? And then the next one is D. So do you know what the next one's going to be after D? Yep, you've got it. It's A, isn't it? So then you put a sharp in there, A. And then after A, it would be E. These lines are supposed to be parallel. <laughs> Just haven't got it right. Parallel. So it's it, because it's a space, E, so you're in space, but you, you ser you're showing the line that you're on, but the space you're showing, you see? And then after E, you would get uh, B, wouldn't you? So then we do the B. And then we're back to F. So that's the seven sharps. Okay. So if you were doing a natural, you would pretty much do it the same way. You, you still, if you want to put a natural on the F line, it's still a box, you see, and then you're just doing that. You're still surrounding that line, see? You do it down, you're boxing it, and then you put a natural sign on. Okay, what you want to be clear, you see, you've got to be clear on line space. And what you're doing it's a bit hard for me to do it but I'm, I just want to get this across if you were doing kind of like flats actually I'll, I'll just do that on okay so just showing you that in base clef draws base clef in two dots which surround the F line so the first sharp is F in it so it's that line we've just sh sharped in so two lines and then halfway between All right that next one is C after C we have G after G we have D And after D, we have A, don't we? Which is uh, G, A, this one here. And after A, we have E, which is this one. And after E, we have B, which is this one. Not very right neat, but at least you can see what it is. The thing, the thing about this with key signatures is that you need to put key signature on every every single stave as you're going down to make it clear for other people. I'll just go through the flats and show you the sequence of the flats. So draw a treble clef. Right, the flats are just. You just follow the same thing with flats. So if you got, you take the flat keys F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, right? You just add alter flats like that. So in the key of F, you added the B flat. In the key of B flat, you add the E flat. So first one to add is this B flat. Now you draw it in like this, you go straight down. And then you go halfway on that space. Can you see that? And then just draw down like that, so it's halfway. Okay. So I'll do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. Go straight down like that. 
and then you loop from halfway so like that. that's probably better uh, so E flat will be the same than the one you drop here you just drop it in like that and then A flat then D flat then G flat then C flat and then F flat, wherever that is, F flat's there so on bass clef it's the same thing so the first one's B flat And then E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. and F flat this will be there okay so that's what it looked like on all the seven flats on a tr on a bass clef okay so you know how to do how to write in your sharps and your flats now so I want you to do that on every single stage so if you've got a piece of music right so <coughs> right you treble clef bass clef on first every stave okay uh, another thing I want to show you about good writing practice by the way if you when you've done that say you put a, a key signal say you're doing that you put your treble clef in you put your key signature in then your time signature I would always put 4-4 four, four. I know a lot of people like to put common time like that but I don't because I think it's confusing Especially when some people scribble it and you ain't got a clue what they're on about. So always put, if it's 4-4 four, four time, put 4-4 four, four and don't put common time in jazz. I, I always do that. 4-4. <coughs> four, four. If it's written on a piece of manuscript paper and using some kind of uh, some kind of software, you know, like Sibelius or something, then it obviously prints it really neat so you don't have to worry. But I think if you're writing by hand, always put the time, the actual time signature in clearly so you can see what you want. Uh, like I say, if you put in things like naturals in, they're basically just the same thing. So F natural would be that. You've still got to surround the, the line. Okay. So you, if you're not really good at writing this, you need to practice it, don't you? <coughs> and if you're writing music out, you're, you're writing something neat for somebody, Write it out in pencil first, then go over it with ink, okay, if, you if you're not using software. Uh, but I always write things out by hand, and then if I, if I need to print it out for somebody, I'll put it into software, like Sibelius or something after, but I, I usually can write quite fast, uh, just as fast by hand than I can, than I can with software, because I'm not really good at software. So if you're writing something like a crotchet rest, this, is a, this always gets tricky some people just go like that you know it's just horrible I mean if you're writing music to try, you know have a go at writing it neat crotchet rest easy I'll do it in section so you can as, so you can see it better you first of all you put a, a, a diagonal line like that so you've got your diagonal line then you curve it back like that okay so now you've got that and that and then you bring the top in like that. See what I mean? So I'll go it again. That. The top in. And then you just block it in like that. So when you do it, 
It's just like that. Very simple. And you can tell it's a crotchet rest then. Instead of all these people who do things like that, you know what I mean? You don't know if it's a snake or what. You can't make any tail on it, you know. So that's how to do a crotchet rest. A quaver rest or an uh, eighth note. So sorry, crotchet rest is a quarter tone note rest for you Americans. A quaver note rest or a eighth note rest is you just put. I always put a dot like that and then just straight down like that. And if it's a if it's a semi quaver or a sixteenth note, I go down and then I just bring another. So that's how that's how I do it. Try to make it look as neat as possible, you know. And crotchets, another thing, uh, uh, some people with crotchets and, uh, or quarter notes. If a quarter note, but if you're doing a quaver or an eighth note, you just bring that like that, okay. I know most of the time we're doing things like that, we're beaming them, aren't we, together. But I've seen some people, they do it like that. They put stem on the wrong way, you know. It, so you have a look, see, look in books and things and, and see proper writing. Right, another thing about good writing practices is when you're actually doing something, you've got bars. Say you're doing some music, da -de -da, like this. So this is in... <coughs> yes, yeah, say, say it's like that and you've got something like that. I don't know what this is, but just... Just something like that, right? What you want to do is you don't want to be, you don't want to be like finishing, leaving big spaces. You know what I mean? If that's four notes, then you want to be doing four. So finish it there so it looks quite neat because that's that's actually two notes. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> finish it neat off. Uh, you know what I mean? So. Let me show you if I've got, I don't think I've got any my transcriptions here, down here. Let me see if I've got sort of a transcription of mine so I can show you. Okay, so I thought we'd just have a look at this transcription, the closer. Uh, if you look at it, it's what I want to show you is this here. You see, I haven't gone over the line. I can't fit that there, so I haven't tried to cram it in like some people do. I've just put a line off and started there. Now we've got spaces here, but it's all right to do that. Because there's nothing there, so you, you're obviously going to read there if you're looking at it. So that that's neat writing, doing it like that, instead of trying to cram it all in like you see some people do. Now if you look at the, the, the information at the top, I've given you quite a bit of information. Here you've got the date of the recording. So the transcription comes from a, a tune called The Closer by Charlie Parker, and which was recorded on the 18th of September 1949. Uh, the tempo is 280 beats a minute, and this figure here is this tells you the chorus and the, the and the bar, the measure number. Uh, what it is is on this tune, uh, it was like a jam session thing at the Jazz at Philharmonic, and the whole the whole people stopped playing. Uh, the the tune just ended. Uh, but the thing is, it ended the tune before Charlie Parker had had the time to get up and solo so he stepped forward so they had to restart again so this the first chorus was them just all getting together and Charlie Parker came in on the second chorus and this is like a, a little mini mini tune on his own you know just Charlie Parker on his own playing playing uh, so so that means second chorus first bar so if you went one two three four that would be second chorus four fourth bar that's what right there you can see here we've got third chorus, it's a 12 bar blues, I'm telling you it's third chorus, so you can count 12 and you know it straight away, it's a 12 bar blues. Down here look, fourth chorus. So, looking at that, you can actually see that it's quite neat and you know what I mean, you can see that that is definitely a crotchet rest, that's a quaver rest or a, a quarter note rest, eighth note rest if you're uh, American. That's a minimum rest or a is it a quarter half note rest if you're American, so so it's it's just neater to write out. So that's what I want to get across because there's nothing worse than getting a piece of music and there's no key signature and you, you you've got all these incidentals. You're trying to figure out what key you're in. Uh, you can't tell what the chords are related to the key. 
you know, and you can't tell what's crotchets and quivers because people put scribbles in, you know, and it just, it really irritates me. And you can't tell what bar number is in because they've got no systematic way of putting bar numbers in. So it's not, there's no irritator. So I really want to get you across to write neatly when you're writing and putting things on YouTube or anywhere to your friends or anybody. Just get into a good habit of writing neatly so people can read stuff and understand it. Okay. I think what it is is I think too many people are obsessed with software now. They get into software that much that they just don't know how to write. It's like typing, you know, typing on a computer. They don't know how to write by hand, you know. But you should you should be able to write things pretty neatly by hand. And you, you you'd have to do it if you're doing a music course. You can't use software in a music course. You've got to write, you know, if you begin your question, you've got to write it down in an exam, you know. Okay, so that's it for this one. Uh, so I'll leave you to practice on that one. I hope it's been useful for you, this lesson. Bye.